From getting shot in the leg to nearly killed by a bear, here is the incredible story of the great explorer Hugh Glass. Glass was born in Pennsylvania in 1783 to parents who immigrated from Ireland. Throughout his entire life, he's seen his fair share of obstacles and unfortunate incidents that saw him nearly die multiple times. He worked as a frontiersman for most of his life and also spent many, many years exploring the areas of North America that we know today as North and South Dakota, Montana, and Nebraska. Although over the years, some people have said that the stories of Hugh Glass have been somewhat exaggerated. I mean, this was in the 1800s and it was way more difficult to document events that happened compared to nowadays. But I'm gonna share with you a couple of stories about him that are crazy, yet believable. First off, let's start in 1817. At the age of 34 years old, Glass was sailing the seas off the coast of Texas, which of course is now known as the Gulf of Mexico. However, during his expedition, he was kidnapped by Jean Lafitte, an infamous French pirate who did most of his work around the Gulf of Mexico and Galveston Island, which was off the coast of Texas. So Glass and his comrade would get kidnapped by him and they were forced to become pirates for two years. Eventually, they found the opportunity to escape and run away, but then, one year later, Glass was exploring around an area that is now known as modern-day Kansas, and he got kidnapped again. This time by the Wolf Pawnee Indians. Fortunately, getting kidnapped by the Pawnee Indians wasn't as bad as he thought. Glass actually liked living that type of lifestyle, and eventually married a woman from that tribe that captured him. Believe it or not, this was a common thing back then. Sometimes European settlers would get kidnapped by a tribe and then they would actually like living with them and they would stay there for the rest of their lives. And here's a fun fact, even today, hundreds of years later, the Pawnee Indian tribe is still going strong. It obviously does not have as many members as before, but it still has a population of over 5,000. And they're mainly located in Oklahoma. Anyway, Glass would spend the next few years with the tribe and he considered it his new home. By 1822, he was ready to continue his exploration. He would join a fur trading expedition where him and a crew of about 100 men would travel up the Missouri River and into North Dakota. But before they could even make it to North Dakota, they got attacked again, this time by the Arakara Indians. The tribe attacked them because they didn't like how Glass and his crew were animal trapping in their area. Glass ended up getting shot in his leg by an arrow and a couple of crew members even got killed before they finally retreated. This incident would eventually lead to the US declaring war on the Arakara Indians, but it wasn't that big of a deal at the time. The quote-unquote war was over pretty quickly and there were only about 20 reported deaths. However, this small event would definitely be a sign for things to come and over the next few years, the relationship between the Native Americans and Europeans would get much, much worse. But yeah, anyway, Glass got shot during the altercation, but him and the rest of his crew were able to escape down the river, well, the rest of his crew that was still alive. They continued their exploration of the area, but about one year later, in August of 1823, Glass would be involved in the most dire situation of his entire life. In South Dakota, Glass accidentally disturbed a grizzly bear. The bear charged and assaulted him, bit into his flesh, and left him with deep cuts and wounds. Wounds that looked like they were fatal. It was over for Glass. His body was in terrible shape and there's no way he'd be able to survive. But he did. After the initial attack, Glass and his crew fought back and killed the bear. Although he was in awful condition and he had a broken leg as well, his crew carried him for a couple of days. Eventually, with Glass being unable to walk by himself, the expedition drastically slowed down and instead of helping him, they actually started to dig his grave, expecting him to die from his wounds in a couple of days. Two guys, John Fitzgerald and someone who people believe was famous mountain man Jim Bridger, were supposed to take care of Glass until he died. But instead, they ran off and left Glass there by himself, abandoning him. Later on, those two guys reported that Glass died, even though he didn't. Yeah, it was a lousy move on their part. As for Glass, he woke up after being unconscious for hours, abandoned in the middle of nowhere. He was forced to crawl 200 miles to the nearest American settlement. 
And that's what he did. He did that while his body was basically torn to shreds from the bear attack, with a broken leg and a mutilated ribcage. The fact that he was able to make it back to civilization in his state with nobody else to help him, man, that's just ridiculous. And it's pretty much the epitome of his life so far. Eventually, Glass was able to find and meet up with one of the guys who abandoned him, John Fitzgerald, but then he decided to let him off the hook. He was obviously pissed off at him, but Fitzgerald was a young guy and he probably didn't know any better. So yeah, that was that, at least Glass still survived. In the next 10 years, Glass would continue his fur trading and animal trapping expeditions, mainly around Missouri and the Dakotas, where he's been for most of his life. Occasionally, he'd fight off assaults from the Native Americans, particularly the Arakara tribe, who, as I mentioned earlier, has seen its fair share of conflicts with the Americans. But unfortunately, the Arakara finally got him. In 1833, near the Yellowstone River, Glass and two of his comrades were ambushed by some Arakara members and they got killed in the process. Well, at least that's what happened according to James Beckworth, who also served under the same regime as Glass. His death was not officially documented, but according to Beckworth, he brought back the dead bodies and this is what he said. We returned together and buried the three men, amid the most terrible scenes that I had ever witnessed. The crying was truly appalling. The three men were well known and highly esteemed by the crows. When their bodies were lowered to their last resting place, numberless fingers were voluntarily chopped off and thrown into the graves. Hair and trinkets of every description were also contributed, and the graves were finally filled up. Yikes, that's a crazy and disturbing image to think about. But it just shows how much Glass and his comrades were respected. But anyway, that sums up the story of Hugh Glass, the man who survived an assault from a grizzly bear. His legacy lives on, and after his death, he became a prominent figure in popular culture. Numerous songs, TV shows, films, books, podcasts were all inspired by Glass. There's even a character in World of Warcraft that's based on him. He also has a really cool looking monument built after him in South Dakota. Now that looks pretty nice. Alright, that's all folks. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.